let f of x comma y comma z be a scalar field or function, and big f of x comma y comma z be a 3D vector field. For each expression, decide first if it is meaningful, and if so, whether the result is a scalar field or vector field. Let's begin by reviewing gradient, divergence, and curl. We find the gradient of a function f, and the result is a vector field. One of the important properties of the gradient of f is that the direction of maximum increase of the function f is given by the gradient of f. A two-dimensional gradient vector is orthogonal to the level curve of f of x comma y equals k at a given point. A three-dimensional gradient vector is orthogonal to the level surface of f of x comma y comma z equals k at a given point. So again, we find the gradient of a function of f and the result is a vector function or vector field. And now let's discuss divergence. The divergence of a vector field measures the rate of change inward or outward of the vector field, also called sync. For a velocity vector field, this would represent the rate of flow inward or outward from a given point. Looking at the formulas below, we find the divergence of a vector field, and the result is no longer a vector field, but a scalar field or function. This means at a given point, we can determine a numerical value which represents the rate of change inward or outward. If the divergence is positive, the rate of change is outward. If the divergence is negative, the rate of change is inward. So we find the divergence of a vector field and the result is a scalar field. And now let's talk about curl. The curl of a vector field measures the rotation or spinning effect. So we find the curl of a vector field and if we have a three-dimensional vector field, the result is another vector field which we can see from the formula shown here at the bottom right. And remember, our vector field is three-dimensional. If a vector field F represents a velocity field of a fluid flow or windstorm, the curl measures the tendency of something to rotate in the fluid or wind. So we find the curl of a three-dimensional vector field, and the result is another vector field. However, if F is a two-dimensional vector field, then the curl of F is often referred to as a scalar function as shown below. Though I did see one source that showed the curl of a two-dimensional vector field using the formula shown here at the bottom. But in this lesson, we're focusing on a three-dimensional vector field, and the curl of a three-dimensional vector field is another vector field. So going back to our questions, for number one, we have the curl of the function f. We don't determine the curl of a function, we determine the curl of a vector field, and therefore number one is not meaningful. Number two, we have the gradient of the vector field f. We do not determine the gradient of a vector field f, we determine the gradient of a function f. Number two is also not meaningful. For number three, we start with the innermost parentheses. We have the gradient of the function f, which results in a vector field. Next, we take the curl of that vector field, which results in another vector field. And then finally, we find the divergence of that vector field, which results in a scalar field or function. Number three is meaningful, and it's a scalar field or function. Number four, we begin with a divergence of the function f. We don't determine the divergence of a function. We determine the divergence of a vector field. Number four is not meaningful. Number five, we begin with the curl of the vector field f, which results in another vector field. And then we find the curl of that vector field, which results in another vector field. Number five is meaningful. The result is a vector field. I hope you found this helpful.